Uh, next up, we have Valera, um, who's coming back up to join us. Um, some fun facts about him. He was born in Soviet Russia. And he says, where you don't test Android, Android tests you. And so with that, he's going to talk to us about Expresso. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. So it's a pretty nice day out there, um, I guess. Uh, can we get the slides up? Yeah. Oh, click it. Yeah, hey, that works. Great. So um, I think Ari, you know, again, I'm coming back to what Ari said because it was such a great keynote. Uh, are we, you know, are we going to have beer or are we going to have coffee? You know, I want to agree with him and I want to say that we're going to have coffee. Uh, so my name is uh, Neo, I mean, sorry, Valera. Um, and uh, I guess if you missed the presentation earlier today, I work uh, in Google on making the lives of Android developers easier, at least when they're at work. Um, outside of that, you know, that's not our area of expertise. So, and one of the recurring themes that we've seen all over GTEC uh, this time is that developers need to write the tests. And I'm really, I mean, we've been talking about this for years, right? And I'm really happy to hear that I think everybody is on board now. Uh, but in order for developers to write the tests, the benefits of testing have to outweigh the costs. And I think Eduardo's presentation was just a perfect lead-in there. And unfortunately, in the Android land, especially in the area of UI testing, this has not always been the case. So as I said earlier in the talk, we analyzed why this was happening, and we decided to, you know, that it needs to be solved and that we need a fresh start. And then we identified these three important characteristics of what the tests should be like if the developers are going to write them. But before I get into that, I think uh, there, there's kind of an important point to be made. Uh, and that is that at Google, at least, I don't know, in your organizations, um, the, um, we, we support you know, a bunch of different API levels. And I think Simon actually showed a great image yesterday from the Android website. Uh, and you can see the majority of users are actually still on gingerbread and still on ICS. And as the next five billion people come in, you know, to join us in the mobile revolution, you know what, there's actually a high likelihood that they will be running low-end gingerbread devices. So, I mean, are we going to just kind of like leave those people behind? No, we can't do that. And, you know, uh, at Google, a lot of our apps actually run as far back as Froyo and Eclair. There's still a significant amount of users there. But uh, you know, let's let's get back to on track and um, yeah. So actually, the point I was trying to make there is that yes, whatever solutions we come up with and whatever tests our developers are going to write, they need to work across all of these platforms. So easy, it sounds easy, right? Um, when we talk about easy, I think we talk about two things. First of all, it's the ease of deployment. When a dev sits down and starts writing a test, they don't want to install complicated tools. You know, they don't want to learn new things. They just want to write a test, right? And, and we've seen a great example. I think the, the Twitter talk yesterday was awesome. Like, when you make it easy for developers, they're going to do it. Uh, and so with Espresso, uh, we wanted to maintain that. And I think most of the Android developers out there, they're familiar with instrumentation. And we wanted it to be the same exact setup. So Espresso is just a thin layer, just 600 lines of code on top of instrumentation. Uh, so it is really actually easy to set up. But the next part is the API. Um, and the API you know, really needs to feel intuitive, and it needs to feel familiar to the developers. We don't want them to have a, a very large learning curve. And when we started thinking about the API, you know, we just, since we were starting from scratch, and that was you know, really, sometimes it's really useful, uh, we just thought, what, what does the tester, you know, in this case, the developer who's writing the test, what do they want to do? And then they want to do what the user does, right? Uh, we're talking about UI, user interface. And the user really just wants to do three things. They want to find an element. You know, they don't really know that it's an Android view, but it's some kind of a UI element. They want to do stuff with it, like click and type. And then they want to, maybe not all users, but manual testers, they want to check some state. And I think users actually implicitly check state, you know, if something crashes, they're unhappy. So what if you know, our framework just did this and nothing else? I mean, that would be pretty cool, right? But just as important as what the API does is what it actually does not do. You know, we want you to do the right thing, and we want to prevent you from doing the wrong thing. 
So what does a device user not do? The device user has no idea about the internals of the application. They don't care about the fact that there's some activity running right now or you know, views. And it's, you know, in our experience, actually getting these internal objects uh, is kind of dangerous because the state of the application is constantly changing. And if you're holding onto this object, it may get stale. In fact, it will get stale. So we uh, left out this API that some of the other frameworks include. Uh, and so far, we have not seen the use case where actually where we need it. And then, of course, the other thing is for the test authors, what do they not want to do? Uh, and you know, the first thing is we, we kind of talked about flaky tests and how we solve that. And a lot of the frameworks out there, almost all of them that I've seen, provide this nice method called wait until some time out. And uh, let's just do a little poll. After I click on a button, you know, any button on Android and it transitions to the next screen, what's the right time to wait? Um, two seconds, do I hear 10? Five, um, okay, five, it goes to the highest bidder. Five seconds is the right answer. Um, actually, you know what, um, I don't think that's true. I, I actually cannot make that, that choice myself. I mean, I'm not the operating system and I have no idea what's happening on the UI thread right now, so I'm not qualified to make it. So why are we asking test authors to make that decision? You know, that, that's just unfair. So we left that out of Espresso also. And then the last thing is boilerplate, right? There, there are actually solutions for guarding against these concurrency issues uh, and flake, test flakiness, uh, but they require a lot of boilerplate to write. So you know what? Let's remove that also. So this is how our API looks like, and I mentioned it, I showed it a uh, slide earlier today. Uh, you want to find stuff. And uh, the way that we do this is our entry point uh, to testing is on view. It's just a static method. And you pass us a matcher for the view. So you just specify exactly how you want to, uh, to find the view. And UI Automator actually has kind of a similar pattern. You, you would have recognized it. What we did also is that we decided not to write our own stuff. And we reused the wonderful Hamcrest matcher library. You know, it's, those guys are really awesome. We, uh, you know, Hamcrest at first, it just looks like it's too good to be true. You know? Then it actually works really well. And so I have some simple matchers here with ID with text, but Hamcrest allows you to write all sorts of crazy stuff. So you can just find that one view that you're going to work with. And then you can do stuff, and you can check. So that's it. That's our API. So you know, test, test uh, framework authors, that's, that's what they, they have. But we know that we're not going to get the API right in the first, you know, first try, and that we're going to leave out some things that people are going to want. So we provide three main extension, extensibility points. Uh, first of all, as I already mentioned, the onView method takes a Hamcrest matcher. So that's a really easy, you know, you go and you look at how to implement that. It's not that much code. And so we have already some pre canned matchers for you. There's a lot more than that. Uh, but as I said, if you really want to write your own, go ahead. I mean, all power to you. Same thing for view actions. We provide you with a collection right now. Uh, and you know, if you want to write your own, once again, uh, it's easy. Just implement the view action interface. Same thing for view assertion. But in this case, actually, most of the assertions that you're going to do are actually kind of like view matchers. You're just going to say, oh, is this view, does it have this property right now in this current you know, state? And so we provide you with this generic matches method where you pass a view assertion. Or sometimes you actually want to assert that if view does not exist in the current view hierarchy, so we give you that method. Once again, you can write your own. So that's it for our API. Reliability. I mean, that's the other theme that we hear all over GTAC this year, right? And once again, Eduardo's talk, you know, there are, it's better to not have tests than have flaky tests. It causes a lot of pain. And you know, we've seen the Merry Christmas slide, right? So unfortunately, there's this assumption out there that UI tests are flaky, right? And that there's nothing that can be done about this. So how does Espresso address this, uh, this point here? Well, first of all, let me take a step back and, and ask you know, how most test authors solve this. By the way, I did not make this up. I took this from the awesome Google code base. You know, or maybe you're smarter than that, right? Maybe you wrote an awesome like wait until method that loops and retries and maybe has an exponential back off. Or maybe you even got as far as this. And this is actually getting close to the real solution. But imagine if you had to do this for every single test action, right? I mean, talk about boilerplate. 
so Espresso, you know, uh, we, uh, we had this idea that we can actually solve this for the uh, framework authors. And so we started out by synchronizing with the UI thread and all of the UI events and the choreographer and the new APIs and all of the stuff you guys don't want to hear about. Um, and all of that is actually isolated in a level that you know, neither the framework authors uh, nor the, the test authors will have to worry about. But then you know, we discovered, we started testing it on real applications, like, for example, Google Shopper. And we discovered, hey, real applications, they, they do things like talk to the internet, and uh, they write to disk. And the primary way of doing that you know, is to background your tasks uh, and use async tasks. So we went ahead and we added synchronization with the default async task thread pool. So you get that for free. And then we were like, oh, well, we're done, right? And then we discovered more apps within Google, and I won't mention any apps, uh, but they implement crazy stuff. Like they go out and just re-implement Android, uh, all in the sake of performance. And, um, and in that case, like, we, were, we didn't know what to do. So we added an interface where we allow you to actually register with Espresso, a resource, uh, and then you, know, you can actually tell us when your application or your resource is going idle, and Espresso will wait to run the next test operation. I won't have time to get into the nitty gritty details. Uh, so here's a simple recipe. Um, and uh, you know, what, so you know, for each test action, uh, we wait until the application is idle. And then we do an amazing thing, we get on the UI thread. Why do we do that? Because while we are on the UI thread, just like I'm on stage, nobody else can be on the UI thread. Well, maybe until Tony kicks me out. Um, and then we, you know, we find the view using the matcher that you provided to us. We run your action or assertion or whatever you gave us. And then also a very important thing is, as we saw earlier today, some actions like, for example, the click action result in multiple events being placed on the UI thread. So we actually uh, wait until those events get processed, and only at that time we get off. And then if there's any crash, and you know, it happens once in a while, uh, we don't want to crash the UI thread. It's not a good experience. So we catch all of the exceptions, and we propagate these in a user-friendly format to the test author. So with, with this approach, uh, you know, it, everything really runs reliably. And we've seen, we have teams that actually run substantial amount of UI tests right now, and their tab builds are not flaky at all. So, I mean, their continuous integration builds are not flaky at all. But there's actually an extra bonus, and we didn't really set out to, to make our framework super fast, but it turns out that when you remove all those sleeps and wait until's from your tests, and you actually run the millisecond that your app becomes idle, things move really fast. And so perhaps you've seen the demos today that we showed. All of those UI tests that are you know, just flashing on the screen, those were running Espresso. And I mean, sometimes the tests run so fast that they just flash on the screen and we don't even, like, we don't see anything. So speed is always nice, right? And finally, this point, uh, this is kind of understated. And what do I mean by durability? You know, durability is the, the antonym of uh, fragile, you know, fragile tests. And here, you know, we didn't have to invent anything. Instrumentation already provides us a great way uh, of dealing with this issue. And th the problem here is that, as I said, most of our applications are in this really fast development cycle, like Eduardo mentioned in his talk. Uh, and it would be really, really painful if every time a string change happened, uh, you know, your test also broke. And ideally, we want that to not never happen. Or if it happens, maybe it will happen at compile time. And so the nice thing about instrumentation tests is that they are actually compiled in with your application. So there, you know, there is this, um, you know, this connection that you can maintain. And so you can actually refer to elements by resource IDs versus, um, uh, versus just content descriptions. So originally, I, I was going to do a demo. But you know, obviously, I'm running out of time already. So there's no way that's going to happen. Uh, and also, you know, it's kind of boring to watch somebody else code. It's fun to do it yourself. Uh, so here's a Go link for a, a screencast that I did for Espresso. And I also shared this on my Google Plus public um, stream. So you guys can go check it out. And I hope that you do. So um, a lot of the Google teams out there are already using Espresso. We have several more that are onboarding. Um, and perhaps you may be wondering in this talk whether you can also enjoy some Espresso yourself. And so after this talk, uh, I'll be out in the micro kitchen, and I'll be making espresso for everyone. Um, 
Oh, well, uh, bummer, bummer. OK, um, well, I don't know then. I'll, I'll figure out something else. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, but so since I'm running out of time, I'm going to stop that. Um, so uh, seriously, we would really, really like to make espresso available to people because we really like using it ourselves. Um, and uh, we're just working out through some technical details right now. And hopefully, in the near future, it will be possible. So uh, with that, and I, you know, when we do, I'm, and even right now, before we do, I just want to say we're really looking forward to your feedback. You know, do you think we're on the right track? Do you think we're completely off track? It would be great to hear your thoughts. Uh, unfortunately, I think we're not going to have time for questions. But I'm going to be around, and uh, you know, I'll be happy to chat with you. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Blaira. That was awesome. That was a good movie, too. Puss in Boots. Very nice movie. <laughs> I'd probably give this cat just about any.